TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. The Iranian proxy Hezbollah declares its intention to intensify hostilities against Israel. Despite a call by U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin urging Israel to exercise restraint vis-à-vis -vis Lebanon, Jerusalem asserts that it will hold Hezbollah accountable for its aggression. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken stresses that Washington will persist in efforts to pressure Hamas to accept the terms outlined in a ceasefire, which the Islamist terror group essentially rejected. Over 300 rockets, missiles and drones were launched out of Lebanon by the Iranian proxy Hezbollah into northern Israel over the Feast of Shavuot and subsequently to date. During a burial of Abu Talib, the commander of the Anasir division, who was killed over his responsibility for hostilities directed at Israel since October 8th, the Shiite terror army of Hezbollah is not deterred, but rather determined to escalate the war against the Jewish state. If the enemy's message was to hurt our leader, our beloved and dear martyr Abu Talib, if its message was to undermine our resolve so that we would retreat from our position in supporting the oppressed, the fighters and the proud resistance in Gaza then it should know that our definitive and unreserved answer after the spilling of the pure blood of our dear leader is that our answer after the martyrdom of Abu Talib. We will increase our operations in intensity, force, quantity, and quality. And let it wait for us in the field of battle. Following the declared pledge to persist in its war against Israel, over 350 rockets, missiles, and unmanned aerial vehicles were launched at northern Israel, including toward the city of Tiberias. As a result, at least two Israeli civilians sustained wounds, who were consequently evacuated to a nearby hospital for treatment. During the past few minutes, the northern precinct of Israel police is dealing with dozens of rockets that struck multiple locations. During our searches, Golan precinct officers arrived at a location of a rocket strike from which two wounded civilians were extracted. They were evaluated by Megan David Adam in light to moderate condition as a result of shrapnel wounds. I call upon all civilians and residents to stay tuned to the instructions of Home Front Command. Alongside limited damage to civilian structures, most of the incoming projectiles fell in uninhabited areas, sparking a number of blazes in wild brushes, causing extensive damage. Meanwhile, as Jerusalem's security cabinet held a meeting to deliberate the latest escalation vis-à-vis -vis Hezbollah in Lebanon, U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin called his Israeli counterpart, Defense Minister Yav Gallant, and re-emphasized to him that the Biden administration wants to see the situation along the Israel-Lebanon border de-escalate. We are seeing um, an increase in activity in the north, um, and we don't want things to escalate into a broader regional conflict. Um, and that's something that is not new. That's something that we've said from the very beginning, um, from when Hamas first you know, launched its brutal attack on October 7th, we, we never want to see an escalation of tensions in the region. And we took very specific steps from the beginning um, with the secretary making that decision and, and of course, with the president um, to have the Ford go into the Eastern Med. Um, we're going to continue to urge for de-escalation. Um, that was something that the secretary spoke with Minister Gallant about at length yesterday. Um, I'm not going to get into more specifics of the call itself. Um, but we don't want to see a wider regional conflict, and that's why we do want to see a de-escalation of tensions in the region. While Hezbollah seemingly escalates hostilities versus Israel, raising prospects of a broad regional conflict, including versus the Islamic Republic of Iran, it was cleared for publication that IDF Chief of General Staff, Lieutenant General Helzia Levy, visited the Kingdom of Bahrain earlier this week 
where he met with his counterparts as well as senior security officials from countries in the region. U.S. Central Command initiated this meeting in an effort to form a coalition against the Iranians as well as its regional proxies, building upon the successful cooperation and coordination that prevailed during Iran's blatant attack of over 300 UAVs and ballistic and cruise missiles, which it directed at Israel on April 14th. Meanwhile, the Pentagon Deputy Press Secretary, Sabrina Singh, rejected a notion that the meeting at the U.S. Fifth Fleet's headquarters in Bahrain was an indication of rising regional tensions. This is something that uh, happens often and very frequently. Um, that's not an indication that tensions are rising. That is something that's frankly part of the portfolio um, of where these officials sit. Um, so no, it's, it's about deepening those partnerships. Of course, they're going to talk about and discuss what's happening in the region. Uh, it wouldn't be imprudent not to. Well, the Pentagon, at least declaratively, does not attribute the latest meetings in Bahrain to rising regional tensions. Jerusalem is unequivocal in its intentions to reassert security on its northern front. Whether through diplomatic efforts or otherwise, Israel will restore security on our northern border. Israel will respond with force to all aggressions by Hezbollah. Lebanon and Hezbollah, under the guidance of Iran, bear full responsibility to the deterioration of the security situation in the north, in full violation of UN Security Council resolution, resolutions 1559 and 1701. It is important to explain that while the Biden administration continues to seek an end to the war in the Gaza Strip, which Hamas instigated by committing a brutal massacre on southern Israel on October 7th of last year, Washington believes that a ceasefire in Gaza could ultimately lead to de-escalation vis-a-vis Lebanon. Well, I think a ceasefire would certainly lead to uh, a de-escalation of tensions, um, but that is something that's still being worked. As you've seen, Secretary Blinken is in the region. Um, I know he made some. He's he's been meeting with different partners in the region. Um, he made some comments earlier today. I don't have anything additional to add to what he said already, but um, certainly it could bring uh, further. You know, it, it would lead to further de-escalation, uh, which is a good thing. During a joint press conference with Qatar's Foreign Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdulrahman Thani, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken acknowledged that a response given by the Islamist Hamas includes demands for changes to the proposed hostage release deal that are not workable. So, we were waiting on one response, and that was the response from Hamas. And as the Prime Minister said, uh, last night, we received a response. Hamas has proposed numerous changes to the proposal that was on the table. We discussed those changes last night with Egyptian colleagues and today with the Prime Minister. Some of the changes are workable, some are not. Regardless of Hamas essentially rejecting the outline, as was said by U.S. President Joe Biden and endorsed via U.N. Security Council Resolution 2735, the United States intends to persist in efforts to reach an agreement with the Islamist Hamas, a U.S. State Department-designated foreign terrorist organization. In the days ahead, we are going to continue to push on an urgent basis with our partners, with Qatar, uh, with Egypt, to try to close this deal because we know it's in the interests of Israelis, Palestinians, the region, indeed, the entire world. And we all agree that the deal has to be grounded in the principles of the ceasefire proposal that the entire international community supports. Paradoxically, while the Biden administration essentially forces Israel to pursue a deal with the Islamist Hamas to end the war in the Gaza Strip rather than attain total victory, it somehow believes that its diplomatic push with the terror group would somehow end its capacity to rule the Palestinian enclave. I can't speak for Hamas or answer for Hamas, and ultimately, it may not be the path that Hamas wants to pursue. But Hamas cannot and will not be allowed to decide the future for this region and its people.
Meanwhile, in the Red Sea, the Yemeni Iranian proxy Ansar Allah, which is dominated by the Houthi tribe, continues to mount daily attacks against freedom of navigation in the Strait of Bab el Mandab and adjacent waterways. The naval forces, missile force, and drone air force of the Yemeni Houthi armed forces carried out a qualitative military operation that targeted the ship Tudor in the Red Sea using an unmanned boat, several drones, and ballistic missiles. The operation resulted in the ship being severely damaged, and it is exposed to sinking by the grace of Allah. The ship was targeted for the owning company's violation of the ban on entry into the ports of occupied Palestine. In response to the Houthi claim of responsibility, the U.S. Central Command released a statement in which it announced that its forces successfully destroyed three anti-ship cruise missile launchers in a Houthi-controlled area of Yemen and one uncrewed aerial system that was launched over the Red Sea. In addition, the Iranian-backed Houthis launched two additional anti-ship ballistic missiles over the Red Sea. Thankfully, no injuries or damage were reported. In contrast, however, CENTCOM did acknowledge that one Iranian-backed Houthi unmanned surface vessel struck a Liberian flag Greek-owned and operated vessel in the Red Sea, which caused the commercial vessel severe flooding and damage to its engine room. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. It is important to highlight that TV7 Israel is a donation based non profit ministry with all of our productions available free of charge. Therefore, we do need your help to continue with our operations and would deeply appreciate it if you'd consider making a donation. You can do so via our website at www.tv7israelnews.com. Separately, I'd like to encourage you. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Essen wishing you an Erev Mevorach, and God willing, we'll see you during our upcoming TV7 Israel updates. Until then, Shalom from Jerusalem.